it's so rewarding like to see you know people turn the corner you know you see them broken or you know struggling and you know we get to give a little bit to them It was just desperation. I, it, you know, I was gonna die. The way I was using, you know, I was gonna die. You know, it was it was simple as that. You know, I'd overdosed on a few occasions. It was actually come to the point where I was taking medication, buying medication, and taking it on purpose, hoping that I didn't live. You know, um, it's debatable. People people call it a cry for help. You know, which I can see that point as well. You know, because sitting here now, I don't want to die. But at the time, I surely felt like I did. You know, so it's it's one of them that's open to debate, isn't it? Um, I just I just feel that you know the, the turning point for me, and and again, why this stuff is so important. I tried for years. I've been to doctors. I've done all that stuff, and nothing made sense to me because I suppose the fact is they don't understand. It's learnt out of a book. You know, when people, you can't learn this stuff. You know, it's hands-on experience. And um, and when I landed in treatment, you know, I was met by, you know, a big burly guy, and he's like, I'm your worker. And I was like, oh, you know, a bit frightened. And I uh, got, to, got to know him, like, and it, and it turns out that he's an addict in recovery himself. You know, therefore, you know, that barrier is straight down, isn't it? The barrier's broken. You know, I'm kind of... I'm open to suggestion from what you say because it's lived experience. You know, I'm passionate about recovery. You know, I kind of lived, I lived a life that not many people want to live. You know, and if I can, can help people, you know, get into recovery and, you know, see there's a better way to live, then, you know, it's a, it's a win-win situation. Is it? I get a career out of it and I get, you know, a little bit of, you know, fulfilment inside for doing these things. You know. How you feeling about this uh, residential anyway? I'm really looking forward to it, you know. To, uh, they've kind of kept it a bit, a bit secretive, really. They ain't really said much about what's going on, so I think that's, what's, that's what I'm excited about. Not knowing what I'm doing. It's a sort of training residential, or it's a Really, I suppose, it's a chance for the Involver Champions, who are the first Involver Champions in Birmingham Mall. It's about giving people the responsibility for the role. So they've just managed to get through the Involvement Champion door, if you like. And we haven't been able to fully invest in that role until we've had the numbers we've got now. Few things voluntary wise, but the one the, what I do with Birmingham on it just it just feels more comfortable. It's more set out for the. I, mean, I, I suppose I'm still a service user in a way, but you know that flip of becoming service provider. <laughs> it's always been hard to, to find that difference between expert and golden champion. We're at a place now where we can start implementing things yeah, that do show us a difference. Shape, yeah? Yeah. Give experts something else then to aspire to. Mark was an IC, so oh, Mark yeah. was an involvement champion. I've gone through the whole the whole process, expert to IC, awesome. into paid work, seconded over to BBSC, and now I'm moving over to be an engagement development worker, so I'm progressing myself forward. And it's just that it's just getting that ball rolling, and that's what we're doing here. And we're getting a solid group together that are gelling really nicely. And I can see I can see that progression within them. That I've you know the progression that I made. I can see it happening now. Go and get some water! Water! Jesus, don't send him for water, he'll go to the shop or something. <laughs> <laughs> Six bottles of Evian, please. Time! Christmas. Come on, we need you there, gang. I reckon two more of them bash and we've got it. Grab it when it comes up. Grab it, grab it. 
Grab it, grab it, grab it. Go, go, go! Grab it, grab it, grab it. Come on. You can't talk to him, Bash. Don't let me break him, Bash. Tell me where you know he's... I think for me, I think the event shows where people are. So you stick a lot of people in a room, you give them a task to do, you can't help if you're observing those people, what they're bringing, what they've got with them. And Lee, at the moment, I suppose, in his recovery, is beginning to show that he's, he's got a lot of skills, he's got a lot of ability, he's done a lot of learning, he's done a lot of reflecting on his history. And he's starting to see the real positives now, I think, in terms of what he can take forward. And I think other people who have shared possibly the last couple of days with him are beginning to look at him and think, that's a nice place to be. Isn't Lee in a good place? Look, I say, it was just positive. I, mean, I said to the guys upstairs, you know, it's still, it's still hard to take some of that like, positive affirmation. <laughs> I'm all right sometimes. People say, oh, I like your trainers. I go, yeah, I believe that. You know, but if it's like, you've done really well at that, it's like, maybe. I suppose you don't believe in yourself early on, but it's just something that grows, isn't it? I think if you, you know, you just keep, you just keep turning up, don't you? Doing the right thing by yourself. Yeah. You know, do I have mental health issues? Do I suffer with depression? Or are they just feelings? Why should I just be consumed with feelings at any given time? Why, why do I think my feelings are worse than yours? Are you going through the same stuff? But it's quite easy to go, where is me, isn't it? And go, well, it's worse for me. You know, and it, and it starts that downward spiral, doesn't it? It's a case of like, keep recognising that thing, I suppose, and go, well, hang on a minute. And just keep reminding yourself of what you've got. The guys have done really well. You know, who oh. set it up, Steve, Jew and Mark, you know, really accommodating to everybody. Well, so what, why do you think they did it? Like, what do you think they were trying to, trying to do by, by planning it all? I know a lot of us know, have known each other a while now, but, you know, confined over a couple of days, a lot of hours in each other's pockets. I think you get to learn a lot more about the person that way. I know they interact with other people and what presses the buttons, you know, kind of. Even down to like, you know, the cooking, kind of who steps up and goes, well, you know, I'll cook and, you know, it kind of shows like characters and, you know, I think that's what they, they, they hope to get from it more. You know, the other, stu the other stuff kind of just keeps you busy, doesn't it? But they're, they're assessing you all the time by watching you and the things probably that you don't realise have an impact on them is what, what probably, you know, what they're getting the most from. Because sort of my place in the, in the, in the structure, I suppose, I don't really meet people in depth. So I'll meet people as they might be going into um, opportunities or I'll meet people at meetings, but I don't get to meet them as real people. And so my first experience of Lee has been in the last couple of days. And he is as, as collected and, and as, as gathered together as, as anybody I've seen that is in his place in terms of his recovery. I've had to do a lot of analysing, you know, and have to go through a lot of pain of like turmoil and head mess and to get to where I'm going. I just think that's part and parcel of it. You know, otherwise we never address anything that's going on for us. He's ready, I think, to, to fly from the nest, I suppose. That'll be sad for us. But it allows then somebody else to take that mantle. But we've got to keep people flying the nest because it's a rather small nest of 30 people. And unless people get out and gone, other people can't get in. I think I'm almost ready to take, you know, that dive into employment. Um, look, I had, a, I had like a bit of a plan. I, I don't think I've like, made this plan in stone when I came into recovery. But um, I was always going to do Parkhouse, Summerhill, and then like, the, the full term at the Rowans, which I've got two years. I think I've got about six months left of that. And, um, you know, I think for the next six months now, you know, someone suggested to me while we was down here that I kind of do, do some computer work because that, that's something that I'm going to need, I suppose, most jobs you go into now. So, 
you know, that's on the agenda for me to do. And, you know, the, the last part of what I set for my recovery, really, in, in as settling down to live somewhere, you know, more permanent, you know, you move, like, so many times early on in recovery, like, you know, and it would be it would be nice, really, to have somewhere and put more stamp on. You know, where I am is lovely, but I can't... I haven't been able to decorate and, and stuff like that, so... You know, I think that'll be the next part of, of my journey. You know, a little stamp on something and that's home. That was good fun. <laughs>